What is going on guys? Today we are back and today we are putting IFS hubs on my solid axle swapped Toyota pickup. So why would you want to run IFS hubs on your solid axle swapped Toyota pickup? Let me explain. factory Toyota mini truck solid axle is actually three inches narrower than the rear IFS axle and most guys including myself get around this by running wheel spacers. These wheel spacers have been on my truck since day one of the solid axle swap and they're the ones that came with the trail gear IFS eliminator kit and if you swap out your hubs with the IFS ones you could say goodbye to the wheel spacer. <laughs> And it's not just that, with IFS hubs you also need to run Tacoma rotors. Putting the rotors on the outside of the hub so you're not having to sandwich the wheel studs through them. Making your brake rotor servicing a lot easier. Not only that, if you ever want to replace a Burfield joint, the whole hub assembly including the locking hubs comes off in one whole unit, keeping all the wheel bearings in place so you don't need to reset them up every time you want to just get at your Burfield joint. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you know I've got major problems with my uh, Warren hubs. Piece of junk. They keep breaking off and this time it broke off and took a chunk with it. Keep in mind, I tighten these before I go out every single time and they're a constant problem. Good news is I've actually acquired a pair of Azen hubs for this thing, so I'm gonna be upgrading to the Azens at the exact same time. Something else I should mention before you try this mod for yourself is that these hubs don't actually fit as it is. I mean, they will, you can bolt them on, but you can't actually put those Tacoma rotors on that we talked about earlier. For me, my buddy Steve at Analog Off-Road acquired these hubs and then knocked down the outside for me, made a video of it, sent those hubs over to me, and uh, yeah, here they are now. If you wanna see more on this process, you should really check out Steve's video. Link in the description below. Okay, enough of the talking. Let's get wrenching. To be clear, you don't need to take the knuckle off for this conversion. I'm only going this far down to actually replace the knuckle because I have some broken studs. Okay, so before I go any further forward, I want to actually show you the differences between the IFS hubs and the solid axle hubs. I got them both out on the bench right here. This is the solid axle hub here on the left, and on the right is the IFS. As you can tell, they're essentially identical, other than the mounting surface for the rim is further out on the IFS. But they use the exact same wheel bearings, the exact same everything. <laughs> the IFS will slide right into place where this once was. So because the IFS hubs move the wheel mounting surface further forward and the rotor further forward, you need to move where the caliper mounts. This is actually a lot easier than you think. You just need to drill out these holes and put a bolt in backwards and then a small washer in there to use as a spacer. As you can see, I have already got the bolt going backwards on the bottom one, so now I'm just gonna drill out this one and do the same. With this, you're moving the calipers from one side of the mounting flange to the other, moving the caliper out just enough to line up with the new rotor position. And with the knuckle modified to fit your calipers, it's time to slide on the IFS hub. Now that the rotors are mounted and it's time to put the calipers on, you've got a choice to make. You can either tap out the mounting holes to match the thread of the bolt you put through the steering knuckle earlier so that it bolts right to the caliper, or there is actually enough room on the other side of the caliper to get a nut down there, which is what I did in this video. So I was kind of expecting this to happen, but as you can tell, I need to clear it's this rotor because it is very much touching that rim. Yeah, I can pull the tire off, grab the grinder, take a bunch off this and uh, try it again. 
All right, here goes attempt three. In case you're wondering, this is how much I took off of this caliper. The whole closest fin is essentially gone. And even if all that material taken out of the caliper, it still does not clear my rims. So we got a problem. I don't like how much material I had to take off that caliper. And in fact, not only did I have to take down the caliper, I took down the inside of the D on my rims and I just don't trust my calipers anymore. Now this might not be a problem you have depending on your rims and their offset. Unfortunately, it's an issue for me. So instead of taking down the other caliper, I made wheel spacers. Now wait a second, didn't I just say one of the benefits of running IFS hubs is you ditch wheel spacers? Yeah, but unfortunately not for me with my current wheel setup. And to be fair, these spacers already sit on the studs that already exist on your truck. So you're not relying on a whole other set of studs like you are on those other wheel spacers, adding a potential fail point in the future. Anyways, I actually made these out of brake rotors. I cut the top hat off and grinded it down and it looks pretty good. And I would definitely trust this over some Chinese quarter inch wheel spacers that you could buy online. <laughs> Something else I highly recommend you do with the swap is go to the parts store, get some studs for the rear of one of these pickups, for the drums. Now, reason is they go right into the IFS hub housing, but they're slightly longer as you can see. So especially if you plan on running a spacer, get the longer studs. And that is how you put IFS hubs on your solid axle swapped Toyota pickup or 4Runner. Anyways guys, if you like this stuff, please remember to give me a thumbs up. And hey, if you don't mind, please hit that subscribe button. Our goal this year is to hit 10,000 and we're getting really, really close. Also, if you want to check out some of our merch, head over to www.dirtgarage.ca. We got some killer shirt designs, including this Toyota's Never Say Die with my brother's 1985 on the front. And that's about it. I'll see you in the next one.